One day he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.
Sister Asunta, you are a native of Naples, but you lived for more than 25 years in Corato. You came to this city because you were attracted by the light of the divine will. What does the divine will mean? Could you tell us about it? In the beginning, man was created with the divine will. At the time of creation, God imparted to man his creative power, his strength, and all his attributes. Therefore, whoever lives in the divine will does nothing but live in God. The first thing that the divine will does is put our inner being in order. That is, all the heritage that God has given us, power, intellect, will, everything must be devoted to God. My surrender to the divine fiat continued, and the more I offered my surrender, the more I could feel its strength fortifying my soul. Its life was animating my life, and its light was comforting, illuminating, and revealing to me the one into whose arms I have placed my trust. While doing my rounds, my divine and sovereign Jesus pointed me out the creation of man, saying, Figlia mia, che dolce ricordo la creazione dell'uomo. My daughter, what a sweet memory it is for me, the creation of man. He was created during during an ecstasy of love. Our love was so great that we were enraptured by the very masterpiece we had created. We were delighted in seeing the beauty of his body, the sanctity of his soul, the perfection of his form, and the harmony of his being. Each of his features and qualities was an ecstasy of joy, drawing us to a greater love for him. Ciascuna sua qualità era un estasi d'amore che sentivamo e ci rapiva ad amarlo. Thus our love was profoundly affected, even made subject in a way. Our ecstasy aroused in us an unwavering and imperishable love toward man. And as this delight was enrapturing us, we didn't mind anything at all. In fact, we placed no limits on our love. We showed so much affection in enriching him with all our goods that no void was left in his being. We wanted his love for us to fill him to the brim so that he might be able to charm and possess our heart continually. The memory of how man was created is enough to evoke our amorous ecstasy for him. Sì, Luisa Piccarreta è figlia del popolo di Corato. Indeed, Luisa Piccarreta is a true daughter of Corato. She was born on April 23, 1865, to a modest family of common origins, and she died on March 4, 1947. She lived for 82 years, and for the first 12 of those, her life was quite normal. But when she turned 12, she began to experience the sufferings that gradually brought her into a state of immobility. In fact, she lived 70 years of her life confined to her bed. From when she was small, she always said yes to Jesus. God asked for yes, and she always said yes, even when she didn't understand. Her inner voice told her to behave in this way, and so she always did. Later, when she was nine, almost ten, she received her first communion. And from then on, an intimate union with Jesus developed. She heard the voice of Jesus guiding her and teaching her, and she always said yes. The same day that Louisa received her first communion, she was also confirmed. She was found to be one of the most intelligent girls. But she hadn't studied. She had attended only the first year of school. 
When the bishop arrived from Trani, he examined her, and he soon realized that the little girl was an inspired soul. The priest also quickly realized that they too were dealing with a special soul. Later, on the farm called Desperate Tower, she said that she felt Jesus inside of her, that Jesus was inviting her to suffer. Her answer was, yes, Jesus, anything that you want, but don't let anybody realize it. Instead, one day she was stricken. While the family was eating at the table, she felt she was losing her senses, and they didn't know what was happening. She kept saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The Lord made her lose consciousness, and Jesus placed the crown of thorns on her head. And Louisa saw some evil men whipping Jesus, beating him and scourging him, with bloody wounds forming on his body. She started shivering. Then the Blessed Virgin came and took Jesus in her arms, calling to her, Come, come to console my child. Don't you wish to offer yourself as a victim for sinners? Come and kiss his sores. Since she had already experienced the attacks of the devil, Jesus told her, A period will come when I shall leave you in the hands of the demons. However, I shall do this only to purify you. Do not worry, because when you have reached the edge of the abyss, I will sustain you. Then in her state of trance, my usual state, she would say, Louisa tried to go to Jesus, but was threatened by demons. At that point, the Blessed Virgin intervened and asked her, Come, who is stronger, Jesus, me, and your guardian angel? See, these demons can never harm you. Come. Then Louisa, still frightened, trembling, and fearful, came slowly forward and kissed his wounds. As she was kissing them, Jesus revived. When these mystical experiences and struggles began at Desperate Tower, the family didn't know what to do, and they took her to Corato. This was the time that the family moved from Via Morge to Via Nazario Sauro. She was, at that time, about 11 or 12 years old. In this new residence, she had a new vision. She saw from the balcony, on this balcony here, a flood of people following a convicted man. The man lifted his head and said, O oh soul, help me. At this she answered, Fiat. Then the great sufferings of Louisa began, followed by the stigmata, the mystical marriages, and the persecutions, especially, and I'm sorry to say this, especially by the priest, because she wasn't understood. It was this fact that induced the bishop of the diocese to send an official priest to her house. Padre Annibale, Father Hannibal, raised today to the honors of the altar, Saint Annibale Maria di Francia, was ordered by the Archbishop to censor Louisa's writings and also to be her extraordinary confessor. Pensavo tra me. I thought to myself, who knows when these truths written about the divine fiat will be made known? What good will they do? And my beloved Jesus, surprising me with a short visit, said to me in a kind and tender voice, Figlia mia, queste verità sulla mia volontà divina My daughter, these truths about my divine will shall awaken the day of my fiat amid the creatures. As they begin to know the truths that I have manifested to you, provided that they have the goodwill and disposition of making them part of their life, they will awaken to a most splendid dawn. After the rise of this dawn, men shall be invested with a celestial peace, which shall confirm them in doing good and encourage them in desiring new truths, marking the beginning of the day of my divine will. This new dawn will amplify the light and love in their hearts, turning all things into good for them. Questo principio del giorno aumenterà la luce. In fact, their passions will be weakened 
and they shall be prevented from falling into sin. This is the first order of the divine goods that they will experience, which will facilitate their actions and let them feel a power that can do everything. Faciliterà le loro azioni. Sentiranno una forza. Then, sensing the great goods of the beginning of my will's day, men will hope that the day would quickly advance so that they may know new truths, which will give to the day its total fullness. During this day, they shall vividly sense the life of my will living in them, together with its joy, happiness, operative power and creative virtue, signs of true possession of my life. This diurnal course shall give them great desire to know new truths, which once known will bring the day to total completeness. At this point, a soul will not feel alone anymore. Between her and my will, there shall no longer be any separation. That which my will shall do, she also shall do. And she shall acquire the rights to possess everything, both heaven and earth, and even God himself. Il cielo e la terra, ed anche lo stesso Dio. Monsignor, you have certainly read Luisa's books. Would you like to tell us what Luisa means for you? Personally, I approached Luisa's writings with a lot of fear. In this way, I began to know her, to map out the history of her person, and I realized that Luisa's language, the language of the common people, expresses an enormously rich content and at the same time expresses the relationship between her and Jesus that is difficult to find in theological books. Now, a theologian as such who is not acquainted with this language and reads these texts merely with a scholarly mentality will always find errors. But Jesus never worked in this way, did he? Indeed, when he introduced his message, he didn't explain his words to the people, he explained with parables. He didn't teach except by the mystery of his own person. He spoke with the language of his time. And then at a certain moment, looking deeper into these writings, we discover Jesus through this person, through this language. This is what is given to us. This is the discovery that we go on ahead and we say, Lord, your will can be done. In what way can we follow Luisa's example? Well, Luisa had a very special life. I don't think we can live in the same way because this isn't what the Lord wants from us, a life of suffering, a life of immolation and sacrifices. She lived only through the Eucharist, and this is a great gift. However, I believe that we must rediscover Luisa's ordinariness. In the deeds and declarations of the cause of beatification, we see Luisa in her ordinariness, the Luisa that comforted, the Luisa that smiled, the Luisa that shared. We must see Luisa in her house as we see Mary in Nazareth. Then we can feel Luisa nearer to us, not as a legend, not as a superwoman, but just as a simple, humble woman, like in the teaching of Mary's Magnificat. Now, I want to tell you why I'm asking for your fiat, your yes, in my volition. I am acting as a master with two servants, one servant was gigantic, Herculean, skilled in everything. The other was a little, short, and humble person, seemingly incapable of doing anything, and clumsy even in the smallest chores. If the master keeps him, it was more out of charity than anything else. Then one day, the master, needing to send a great sum of money to a far-off land, what did he do? He called the little, incapable servant and entrusted him with the great sum, thinking to himself, 
If I entrust this sum to the giant, everyone will notice him on the way. Thieves may assault and rob him. Moreover, if he were to defend himself with his Herculean strength, he could get hurt. I know that he is brave, but I don't want him to become crippled. I don't want to expose him to an evident danger. On the other hand, no one will pay attention to this little servant. Being so insignificant, he will go unnoticed. No one will think that I would entrust to him such a great sum, and he will return home safe and unharmed. This is my way of doing things. The greater the work I want to do, the more I choose a humble, poor, and ignorant soul, with no external features that would make her noticeable. Her humble state will be a secure safeguard for my work. The thieves of self-esteem and self-love will pay no attention to her, knowing her evident ineptitude. Then she, humble and trembling, will perform the office entrusted to her, knowing that it wasn't her skills that performed the work, but only my power working through her soul. Ho fatto tutto in lei. Eccellenza. Your Excellency, you have read the writings of Luisa. Can you give us some comments about them? Spicca questo questa puntualizzazione. What stands out is that in the history of spirituality there has never been an emphasis on fiat. On fiat voluntas tua sicut in cielo et in terra on doing the will of God on earth as it is in heaven. Then I asked myself, how do the saints in heaven do the will of God? By being immersed in God. And this is what Louisa says. The Trinitarian life, the insertion of our souls into the bosom of God begins here on earth and is subject to our acceptance, to our saying yes, to our saying fiat as Mary did. Continuing in my usual state, I found myself outside of my body in a garden in which I could see the Virgin, my Queen, sitting on a very high throne. I decided to go up and kiss her hand, and as I tried, she came to meet me, placing a kiss on my face. While looking at her, I saw a globe of light inside her being, and within that light, a word appeared. Fiat. From the word were emerging many and different seas of virtues, graces, greatnesses, glory, joys and beauties, everything that the Virgin our Queen contained in her soul. All her goods were rooted in one single word and were springing from one single source, Fiat. I kept looking at her with great amazement and she said to me, My daughter, all my sanctity came out from the word Fiat. I never moved out of the will of God, even for one breath, step, act, or anything else. My life, food, and all was the will of God, and this produced in me great sanctity, riches, glory, and honor, not human, but divine. Thus the more a soul is united and identified with the will of God, the more she can be called holy and be loved by God, and the more she is loved by God, the more she is favored, because her life is nothing but the product of God's will. How can he not love this faithful soul if she is always one with the divine? Therefore, a soul must not look at how much or how little she does, but rather at what she does is the will of God. In fact, the Lord looks more at something little, if it is done according to his will, than at something great done outside of his will. Senza di questa. Let's look at the gift of the invisible stigmata. This crucifix came to life, and five beams came out of it, from the hands, the feet, and the ribs. At the end of the beams from the hands and feet, there were nails, and from the ribs there was a spear point at the end. Despite being so overcome by the suffering that she was shaking, she wanted to suffer, and seeing these rays coming towards her, she said, 
Jesus, I'm ready for anything as long as no one knows. Between you and me, we must suffer together, but nobody must know. And Jesus granted her wish. I believe that the most important dimension of Luisa is that of mysticism. She reached a high degree of union with God. We can say that all her life was lived in God, for God, and in a continuous search for God. The keystone of her spirituality is living in the will of God, made strong by the invocation found in the Our Father. It is a very important prayer, your will be done. Afterwards, while thoughts were coming into my mind about the impossibility of establishing the divine kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, Jesus, with a sigh, told me, Figlia mia benedetta, ciò che è impossibile agli uomini è possibile a Dio. My blessed daughter, everything that seems impossible to man is surely possible to God. If I hadn't been so sure that the kingdom of God could be established on earth as it is in heaven, I, in my fatherly goodness, would never have taught men the Our Father prayer. Why pray for impossible things? If I knew that this prayer could never be answered, I wouldn't have said it myself first in such earnestness, and I certainly wouldn't have told my apostles to teach it to the entire world as the most beautiful and meaningful prayer of the Church. Hence, if it were impossible that my divine will could reign on earth as it is in heaven, I would have taught a useless prayer without effect. Indeed, I don't know what to do with useless things. I can even wait for centuries, but I must see the fruits of the prayer that I taught. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. These few words encapsulate abysses of graces, sanctity, light, communications, and divine transformations between creatures and Creator. E trasformazioni divine tra il Creatore e le creature. And now, Father Sabino, tell us, as postulator, you have done a profound examination of Luisa's life and works. What is your opinion about this servant of God? Ecco, devo essere sincero. In un primo momento, ho sentito. I must be sincere. At first, I felt a certain allergy towards Luisa for this motive. I noticed that around her sometimes there is a risk of fanaticism. But after seeing Luisa in her intimacy, meeting with witnesses and looking directly into their eyes, I have discovered the real person she was. Today in this frantic society, when there is no time to listen, to think that this woman spent her whole life listening to God and to her brothers in Christ explains why she has become so famous. You went to her and found an attentive listener. You went to her and found a word of peace. You went to her to see a woman, and instead you found God. She was the manifestation of God. Ecco lei è stata la manifestazione di Dio. Dopo 40 anni e più che non uscivo all'aperto, after 40 years and more without going out in the open, today they took me out into the garden in a wheelchair. As I went out, the rays of the sun totally invested me, as if it wanted to give me its first greeting and its kiss of light. I returned its greeting with a kiss. Now, who can describe my emotions in finding myself after so many years before that same sun that my dear Jesus had used in order to give me so many examples and images of his adorable will. I was invested not only by its light, but also by its heat, and the wind, wanting to compete with the sun, was kissing me with a light breeze, cooling off a little the ardent kisses of the sun. I felt like they would never stop caressing me, the sun on one side and the wind on the other. Then, while I was under the attention of the sun, the wind and the vastness of the blue sky, my sweet Jesus moved within my heart in a tangible way and told me, E mi ha detto, Figlia diletta del mio volere, Beloved daughter of my will, 
Today everyone is rejoicing for seeing you in the open again, the whole celestial court, sensing the cheerfulness of the sun, the joy of the wind, and the smile of the heavens have run out to see what is going on. And in seeing the sun kissing your face, the wind caressing your body, and the heavens smiling at you, they are marveling at the power of my fiat moving the elements to celebrate the newborn daughter. The whole celestial court, uniting with creation, not only are participating in the feast, but also are sharing in the joy and happiness that my divine will imparts to each of those who celebrate your presence. And I, being a spectator of this, am preparing a feast within your soul, not even minimally regretting having created the heavens, the sun, and all the universe, because I see you, my little daughter, very happy and greatly rejoicing with them. Indeed, all the joy, happiness, and the glory of the beginnings, when innocent Adam had not yet spread the sorrowful notes of his rebellious will throughout creation, are now repeated for me. In tutta la creazione. Man must recognize God through creation, and this is the meaning of the rounds, which recognize God through creation and so give love and praise to him. Jesus said, I do not create the sun for the sake of the sun, because it cannot return my love. I created the sun for you and for all of humanity. When I created man, I created the universe for him to live in, but I must live in man. Thus everything is a gift for us and we are a gift for God. Yes, Father Gennaro once asked Luisa, you must tell me how you make these rounds. Because she'd say, I'm melting, I'm fusing. But what does this fusing mean? And she said, I see, I concentrate, I enter into God, into his most holy will. In front of me, I see what seems to be a little girl coming out of me. I understand that she is my soul. And I lose myself in creation. I voyage among the stars, in the heavens and in the sun, in the air I breathe. In all the universe I see love, and I gather all the love that God has put in creation, and give it back to God in praise, in love and thanksgiving, for everything that he has done and placed in creation for me. And I thank him, I praise him, I bless him for me and for everyone, including those who don't thank him. But one thing I do ask, I ask that God's kingdom come, because before sin, man lived as king in the created universe. And so, I must give love back to God, including the love rejected by Adam. These books came to be written because of the will of the Church. This we know because the local Church, through her confessors, told Luisa to write down everything that passed between her and Jesus. Now, out of obedience, I want to say a few words on the difference between living resigned to the divine will and living in the divine will. Living resigned, in my opinion, means to be surrendered to the divine will in everything, both in prosperous and in adverse circumstances, it means seeing the hand of God in everything, independently of circumstances. An example of this is afforded by the parable of Good Son, who goes wherever his father wants him to go, and suffers whatever his father wants him to suffer. Poverty or riches, it is all indifferent to him. He is happy just being what his father wants him to be. If he receives an order to go somewhere and carry out some business, he quickly obeys, because his father wants him there. Naturally, he has his own free will, which he uses to stop and to rest, have some food, and deal with people. Thus, he is not totally under the control of his father. He does not abdicate his own liberties and will, even though he goes on doing the business of his father. However, in many things, he finds himself in the circumstances of deciding things by himself, and this can drag on for months and years without receiving any new order or specification from his father. On the other hand, living in the divine will means being inseparably connected to the Father, doing nothing outside of His will. This happens when a soul feels incapable of accomplishing anything by herself, 
She does not ask advice nor receive orders from God. When asked, this soul always answers the Father, If you want me to do this or that, let us do it together. And if you want me to go here or there, let us go together. So she does only what the Father does, and goes only where the Father goes, and nowhere else. She lives inside the Father, never outside of Him. Therefore, she is the reflection and perfect portrait of the Father, unlike the soul that is only resigned to the will of God. It is impossible for anyone to see this child without the Father, nor is it possible to see the Father without the child, and this bond is not only an external one, in fact, all her inner being is inextricably interwoven with the Father's essence, totally transformed and dissolved in the divinity. Sperduto tutto, tutto in Dio. You have had the incomparable gift of personally knowing the little and yet great servant of God, Luisa Picaretta. Can you tell us about the relationship you established with the soul, so sublime and so extraordinary? Yes, my relationship with this creature of God wasn't continuous, but only sporadic. However, it gave clarity to my soul. My visits to Luisa happened when I was between 16 and 18 years old. At that age, I wanted the confirmation of my call to the religious life. And Luisa read my soul as an open book and told me, Yes, it's good. You will be a nun. But remember, your own will goes under your feet. Here is the Luisa's message. To be a little daughter of the divine will. It was clear to me. The priests, for example, the missionaries that believed and admired Luisa's holiness. When they came, they spent hours with Luisa, talking about their difficulties, their problems, and their dealings with people. She was like a respectful daughter with them, but she guided them as well. There were two forces present. They helped one another. Luisa helped the priest to walk in the way of the Lord, and the priest sustained Luisa in her difficult trials. The Lord, when he loves souls, he makes them go through a melting pot and along twisting roads. And when these souls bear up, we bow down before this gift that the Lord has given us, particularly for the people of Corrado. Luisa is a star, a guide. She is the reflection of the sun, the divine sun. Luisa is a stella, Luisa is a guida, è il riflesso del sole di Dio, del sole divino. We didn't suffer anything during the Second World War. And why did the Lord do this? He did it for Luisa. She was the one on her bed of pain. Luisa suffered for us, and we enjoyed the fruits of her friendship with the Lord. This is Luisa for me. Luisa is great, great because of the will of God. She has unveiled for us this great mystery of the will of God. There weren't any disagreements between God and Luisa. While I was meditating on the divine will, with thousands of thoughts crowding my mind, I said to myself, why does Jesus love so much to possess my will? If he gives me his will, it's all a gain for me. A divine will in my power gives me possession of everything, even of God himself. Yet, what does Jesus gain in exchanging his will for nothing less than my will? I certainly don't know if Jesus ignores accounting rules 
or the importance of this precious gift he gives to me. It seems as if he is not willing to assign the right value to this exchange of gifts. However, one thing is sure, his love for me is true, because it is totally selfless. And while my mind was blundering about this, my gentle Jesus appeared to me in a very attentive, understanding, and caring way, and said, My blessed daughter, I can't keep accounts with creatures. In fact, all that they have is mine. I gave them everything. There is nothing really that belongs to them. So when they give something to me, they give what already belongs to me. My love for them prevents me from keeping any accounting records. Now, in order for me to give you my divine will, it is necessary that you give me your will first. In fact, two wills cannot reign together inside one heart. You should know that if your will remains in you, it shall be always weak and insignificant. But when it arrives in my creative hands, I transform it into a powerful will, reviving it and enclosing it in a great productive value. I, as celestial gardener, shall work in the field of your will, turning it into a beautiful meadow in bloom, a garden of delights. Yet for me to be able to give my will to you, it is necessary that you give me first your little and insignificant will if nothing else but to give me a pretext to be able to give you my great gift. Thus, give me a chance to say, she has given to me and I have given to her. It is true that she has given me very little, but stripping herself even of the little she had is the greatest gift she could give to me. I will personally make up for what she lacks. How in your shepherd's heart do you feel about the future of this new reality that is spreading all over the world? Personally, I feel very responsible. There is a continuous and really insistent request for Louise's writings because all those who have had the chance to read the approved texts and even those who have had in their hands the photocopies of the other volumes of her diary, not yet approved, they all say to have found spiritual benefit. They all say that knowing Luisa has caused an actual conversion in their lives. Given the situation and given the testimony of so many, I feel it is urgent to offer within the responsibility of the diocese the official edition of the writings. Personally, I am convinced that if we embrace the cause of Louisa's spirituality, the Lord will, through us, bring about the triumph of that light which he gave to Louisa and which Louisa knew how to transmit to us using means that to us seem rough and ready. But if they are cleaned up and read in the light of God, they can produce a sanctity which is suitable for our times. Our times need a new call to true and full and total holiness. Today, if we tend toward mysticism, we won't come out of positivism, out of relativism. We really need to be decisive in evangelical radicality. Abbiamo bisogno veramente di essere decisi nella radicalità evangelica. Non possiamo andare più avanti l'esercizio, le virtù. We can no longer go on in this way, trying to be virtuous. The virtues must be absorbed into a total abandonment to God. We can't be virtuous today and not tomorrow. We can't do something good now and not later. We need to give all to God. I believe that the words of John Paul II are the right ones. Open the doors to Christ. Because by opening the doors to Christ, we will possess Jesus, and Jesus will possess us. God must possess us. If God doesn't possess us, we can never possess him. Thank 
continuando il mio solito stato. While I was in my usual state, I felt a great desire to do the most holy will of Jesus, who approached me and said, Mire mi ha detto, Figlia mia, my daughter, my will is the holy of holies. The soul who does my will, however little, ignorant or unknown she may be, leaves the other saints behind, in spite of all their prodigies, great conversions and miracles. Rather, in comparison, the souls who do my will are queens, and all the other souls are at their service. It seems that the soul who does my will does nothing, but in reality, she does everything. In fact, by remaining in my will, she acts in a divine manner, in a hidden and mysterious way. Therefore, she becomes light that illuminates, wind that purifies, and fire that burns. The souls who live in my will are living miracles that allow others to do miracles. Those who do miracles are only channels through which the divine power flows. Yet the souls who live in my will possess the very source of that power. Therefore, the souls who live in the divine will are the feet of the missionary, the tongue of the preachers, the strength of the weak, the patience of the sick, the orders of the superiors, the obedience of the subjects, the tolerance of the slandered, the firmness of people in danger, the heroism of the heroes, the courage of the martyrs, the holiness of the saints, and so on. Being in my will, they are involved in all the good acts performed, both in heaven and on earth. Che ci può essere in cielo ed in terra. O glorious, most holy Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we praise and thank you for the gift of holiness you granted to your faithful servant, Luisa Picaretta. Her virtues of obedience, humility, and great love for Christ and of the Church urge us to ask you for the gift of her glorification on earth, so that your glory, the kingdom of truth, justice and love may shine on earth, spreading all over the world the special charism of the fiat voluntas tua sicut in cielo et in terra. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven.